Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. All right, so it feels like forever since I've recorded anything. So I thought, well, let's start off this year with a barrel knot because you know, I'm the unofficial or official barrel knot queen. I don't know, you guys always tell me I am. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be making what I am calling the Hannah necklace. And I'm gonna be using some of this beautiful uh, gray lace agate. And I really love it because it's got a few different tones other than gray. We've got some other little colors happening there. And I've got seven pieces of that. And that is a 10 millimeter, I believe. And those are a large hole bead. And to go in that, we have some of our antique gray, um, it's a natural antique gray leather. And I'll be using a bit of 20 gauge dead soft craft wire. I have one of these little um, lotus charms and I have one of our um, they're about a 14 millimeter check glass uh, rondelle and um, I just love these this is such a cool color it goes really nicely with the gray because the gray actually has a little bit of sort of brownie kind of pink in there so it works perfectly I'm also going to be using one of Tierra Cast's scalloped bead caps and I've got one of their little beaded bales I also am gonna be using uh, one of our SOC4. Everybody's always asking me what the code is for these. So these are the silicone sliders. Now, if you can't ever find it by typing SOC4, you can just type in the word silicone. In our search engine, if you use sort of fewer words than more, it does make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna be using that. And then we've got a couple of these large hole spacers. And for tools, we're gonna to be using our four basic tools. We've got our cutters, our bent chain nose pliers, our round nose pliers, our regular chain nose pliers, and of course we've got a barrel knot tube. And just in case things get a little crazy at the end and I can't quite get the leather through, I might need a pair of these little tweezers. We do sell these for only $3.99 and they are one of those must have in your tool arsenal or kit box or whatever. So, so I'm not using one of our mats that I normally use. That helps deaden a little bit of the sound, but I find because it's a bit of a yellow color, it really casts off this weird tone. So I'm trying just a little bit of parchment paper here, um, just something to see if we can get a little uh, different tone. Uh, so it might not sound quite the same as it usually does, but hopefully it'll all work out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is make my little uh, beaded component here. So. I'm gonna be using about six inches of wire or so, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to measure that. And you can see sometimes when the uh, wire comes off, see this is <laughs> where it's gonna be noisy, but we'll have to get used to that for a little bit. So when it comes off the spool, sometimes it's a little bent, but I'm not gonna worry about that. This doesn't have to look nice and perfectly straight. We can make it a little bit straighter by taking our chain nose pliers and placing them at the top and running our fingers straight down. And there we go, that's a lot straighter. So now I'm just gonna take my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna go down about an inch and a half and I'm gonna use my thumb and bend away. I wanna create a nice sharp angle there. That really does help. Now I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I wanna go down to the bottom here. I don't want a very large loop. So I'm gonna take my finger from behind and push up and over and straight down, open the jaw of my plier, rotate, and then pull that tail right to the back. And you can see that that's almost on top there. I'm just gonna rotate it ever so slightly. What I wanna have is something that looks just like that, kind of a nice little stop sign sort of thing, or a lollipop, whatever we wanna call that. So I'm gonna take the short end and put it through the loop, and I just open it up with my fingernail and pop that in there. Now I'm gonna turn it so that the little piece is on the top and the long one is off to the left there. And I'm just gonna wrap with my thumb there. So I'm just gonna go around twice, and then I'm gonna go back towards my pliers a couple times. I'm just creating that little bit of a, a bulky wrap. 
So you just go around a couple times until you're happy with how it looks and turn that over and then take the flush side and go towards the wire that you're keeping and give that a little snip. And then now I want to have a look and see how that looks on the end. It doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to take my plier and just push that down ever so slightly. So this is what we've got happening so far. And you know, you're the boss of this wire, so you can always move it around wherever you want. So now I'm going to take our nice big juicy rondelle that we've got. And you can see that the end on this one is a little bit, a little bent. So I'm just going to take my plier and just kind of straighten it out. It'll make it a whole lot easier to get that on there. There we go. And then I'm going to take our little um, bead cap. And then I'm going to take one of our beads here. All right, so now we've created our little uh, link here. So now I need to uh, finish it off in the top. So I want to have this loop on the top the same direction as the loop on the bottom. And I always find if I'm looking directly at it, it makes it a whole lot easier. Because what I want to do now is just take this and bend against the bead. I don't really want to have much of a neck, but I want to make sure that I have the loops going the same direction. So I'm just going to kind of get my pliers in there as best I can. And I'm going to go up, over, and down, rotate, and pull that to the back. And you just kind of manipulate it. You know, I say it all the time, probably in every video, that you really are the boss when you're making your own jewelry. And that's the, the nice thing about making it. You can uh, make it do what you want it to do. All right, so I just put on the little loop of the bale, and I'm going to come across that loop that I created. And I'm going to wrap down a couple times and then back up a couple times, just like I did on the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with the flush side of my cutters. Give that a little trim. And find my little end. And that end is actually put in there pretty well. So, you know, sometimes if you start mucking around with things, it doesn't end up very nice. So I'm just going to leave that one because I think it looks pretty good. So we've created a nice little focal point here, and I really love the color mixtures here. So that made a little bit different. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of the way here. We need some of this later on. So that's the one thing about not using the mat is everything flies around, so I have to kind of keep those in a bowl. I will find something else. It's just all of the fabric stores here have closed, so I'm, I've got to go out and, and hunt. I need to find something, so... Okay, so what I want to do is find sort of the center point of my leather, which all I did was marry up the two ends and then just found the center. And I'm just going to sort of mark where the center is with my thumbnail, and that's where I'm going to create my first uh, barrel knot. So I'm just going to take my barrel knot tube. Let me just move that so you can see what I'm doing here. In case you happen to have never seen a barrel knot before. So I'm just going to take my piece here and I'm going to wrap it around once and twice and three times and I'm working towards my left hand and then I'm going to take the tail that I um, was working with and put it through the back and I'm going to hold on to that knot and remove the tube and then pull it tight. Now I know you can't see the knot but I need to have it covered so that it doesn't fall apart. And so now I'm just going to sort of make it do what I want it to do which is being nice and neat and you want them to sort of stack on top of each other just like that. Okay, so that's like the perfect barrel knot. All right, and then, then I'm going to take my little piece that I just made, pop that on, and I'm going to create a barrel knot on the other side. So we're just going to kind of lock that in with some barrel knots. So now I'm going to take my tube and do the exact same thing on the other side, go around three times, and then take that end I was working with and come through the back and pull that through. And then I just want to tighten it up so that it's sort of locked in there nice and snug. I don't want to pull it so tight that there isn't any movement. So just be kind of mindful that you're not pulling super, super tight. All right, so now we're just going to make a succession of knots with our, our beads and our barrel knots. Now, if you can't get that in there, for some reason, maybe one of the holes is slightly smaller. You can always just take a pair of scissors or cutters or something nice and sharp. You guys know I never have scissors. So I'm just going to go through there and there we go. So now I'm going to create a barrel knot. So I'm going to go once, twice, three times, and I go all the way around. 
come through the front and then go through the tube. And that will create my three knots that I need or three loops, I guess. And then I'm gonna sort of push that. You can see I use my thumb and my thumbnails a fair amount to sort of maneuver this around. You have to be careful when you're using nails on your leather though, you can actually wreck it. So I'm, I'm using it just more of a, like a stopper. I don't push my nail into the leather, I sort of move things around. And if you push that so tight that it buckles, it's not gonna have that same um, fluidity that we wanna have. So, you know, just kind of, it's that, that thing of the balance, right? We wanna find that balance. So I'm gonna create another one. So I'm gonna push that up to my barrel knot there and do another one. You can see once you uh, learn how to do these, they're pretty darn easy. And this can be whipped up in no time at all. So I'm not really so happy with using this um, piece of paper here. It's creating a very sort of dead sound in here. So I'm hoping it's not poorly translating on the video. But um, I'm just experimenting at this part try, or point, trying to find something that works a little better than what I've got. So if you guys have any great ideas, let me know. I was thinking of something like a piece of denim, you know, maybe I should just go like try and find an old pair of jeans or something like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I want. Like I, I like sort of that rustic-y look. I want to sort of stand out from other people that do videos. So if you have any ideas, let me know because I'm kind of at a loss because that little um, thing is the wrong color and it's really small and you always see the edge of the table and I just don't like the way it looks. So after making 250 videos, I'm just not happy with that part of it. So time for a change. All right, so we're doing three on one side and three on the other. And you can see how nicely this is coming together. And I really love just this little extra color here. And you can, it does relate in here. If you're wondering, well, why did she mix that color with gray? But you can see there's a little bit of that same color in some of the stones. And it just, I just think it's a really nice, it's not quite a contrast. It kind of just works really nicely with it. So and I've got another color that I will show you at the end. Um, so you'll have two different color ways to choose from. And I'm trying to keep my kits as reasonable as possible. So I can't remember exactly what this one prices out to but I'll figure that out before the end of this video. Okay, so just creating my other side and you can see we're, we're almost done on this. So just, you know, make the knots as nicely as you can. And if it's not going where you want it, I find that by kind of rolling it between my fingers will sometimes help that go. And if it really just doesn't look right, then just take it apart. It's just easier to take your barrel knot apart before you tighten it up because once you tighten it up it's a little bit harder to pull back so so i think we had about a meter and a half of this is 1.5 millimeter leather and uh, it's plenty of leather so you may actually end up cutting some off i like to be inclusive in my sizing when it comes to um, jewelry because i'm a big gal and my necklaces never fit if I buy something off the rack, so to speak. So we're giving you lots of leather so you can adjust this and make this, it is an adjustable necklace, but you can adjust it and make it whatever length you want. So if you wanna have something that you can actually wear in different ways, like have it short one time and then long another time, this is the perfect thing. All right, so you can see how fast that went together. All right, okay, so this is what we've got happening so far and I'm just loving the look of this. I think it's so sweet. So now what I wanna do is sort of match up my two knots and I'm, it's kind of hard to do this all on camera, but what I'm doing is kind of running my fingers down and I wanna make sure that my ends are the same in length and oh my gosh, look at that. I got absolutely lucky. So now what I wanna do is put my leather through the hole here and sometimes that can be a bit um, hard to do. Um, I've got one here that's cut on an angle. So let's go with the one that is not cut on an angle. And then I'm gonna sort of pull this one back a little bit and then try and stick this one in. And if it doesn't work, the other thing that I like to do 
is grab hold of these tweezers. They're, they're just a fantastic little thing. And just kind of boss it through there. You know, sometimes you have to try it a few different times. I actually used my pliers on the sample that I made that I'll show you in a bit. Um, but these tweezers work great. I found them in my desk here. So there we go. It just kind of pulls through there. So now you, what you're going to do, and again, it's kind of hard to show you off or on camera, but you can see, I'll try and do this. Look at how much leather we've got. We've got a lot of leather here. So it depends on how long you want to have this. So you're going to have to sort of, you know, figure it out. But what I figured out for myself is that if I left myself about six inches of leather up top here, it was sort of sat nicely, but you'll have to kind of adjust it. So what I suggest is at this point, putting it on and seeing what you want to, where, what you want to do, where you want to go. Like, do you want to have a longer necklace or a shorter necklace? This necklace could look cute either way. So if you like to wear something a little bit um, longer, you know, below the bust line, then this is perfect to be able to adjust this. So you get to make that decision. So once you've figured that out, what I'm doing to finish off the ends is just a few little barrel knots and a little bit of embellishment. So I'm gonna start down here about six inches or so, and I'm just gonna make a double barrel knot. So just go around twice, put that through, and I'm going to add one of these um, metal large hole beads. And this is optional. You can finish it off any way that you like, because again, it's your piece. If you buy a kit, you can do whatever you want. If you're making it at home, if you've already got everything, you can do exactly what you want. But you need about six inches or so to be able to do what I'm doing right now, because you do need a bit of length to be able to do the barrel knots. All right, so that just kind of creates a little bit of a stopper. And so I want my next one over here, about the same place. So I'm just going around twice. We don't need a lot of knots. I just want it to be decorative. And then it will be a bit of a stopper so that your silicone slider won't come off. So I just want to sort of have that match up with the other one. And if it's not identical, it doesn't matter. I do like to try to make it look fairly close. And then we're going to go around twice. And I, I don't really think you need any uh, glue on this. If you make barrel knots and you're finding that they don't um, stay together, it's because you haven't tightened them up enough. So if you're worried about that, like if you're reselling something like this, you could take a little dab of GS Hypo and put it right where that cross is over there. Um, and then it would be pretty safe. So then I'm just going to trim this off. And then this is what we've got on the end. So now you're not going to lose your slider over the end and you can still adjust it and make it longer or shorter. So I'm just going to be back in a second. I'll show you both colors. All right, so there you go. There's the two completed looks. This one is the one we were working on that has the gray tones with the beautiful uh, Picasso curvy rondelle and it will have the silver metals. And then on this one, we have the beautiful blues and we have um, antique brown leather and then the antique bronze uh, metals. So you get a couple different choices if you are to purchase a kit. I will leave a link below that will take you directly to my fully secure website where you can purchase your own kit if you so choose. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I do love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.